<laughs> so old. It is another beautiful morning here on our homestead in North Idaho. We've got Seth clearing paths today. Jules is cleaning out the wood stove. And I'm winterizing the cabin. Today, guys, I am connecting the path from the cars all the way over to the chickens. This right here is how we get all those cool shots for you guys. Our wood stove is super full, as you can see right now, full of ashes. So I'm gonna go ahead and empty out all of these ashes so that we can have a big fire and like actually put like big logs inside of it. Cleaning the wood stove is kind of a dirty job. I think Mike Rowe would be proud of me. It is already full, so we are gonna go dump it in the snow. Now I see all these aches and make you grow. This is actually our compost pile covered in snow, and this is a great place for us to throw our ashes. All right, first things first, we've got to unplug the water pump right here. Okay, water pump is unplugged. Hey, Jules, would you please go open all the valves in the house? Okay. Flush the toilet, too. Okay. Tuxer? Wanna help me? Wanna help me do that? Let's go. Sink, toilet, shower, one more sink. Marty, yeah. I did the cold. You want all of them on, all faucets on. Yeah, but how do I do that in the kitchen sink? Put it in the middle. I didn't yeah. even know that. <laughs> I just learned something new. Put it in the middle, he said. Everything stopped running. Yeah, that's what it's supposed to do. I know, I was just giving you an update. Oh, gotcha. <laughs> Yeah, so that's good. We got all those empty. Now we'll go get the air compressor and we'll blow out the lines. Cool with that? Yeah, let's do it. So that's bringing me a bucket so I can have a step. Because I'm tired of crawling in and out of here so difficult to leave. Better if I had a lid though. There's cool. one right here with a lid. I know, but that one's full and heavy. Ready? <sighs> Look at you go. <laughs> 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 so old. Oh, it's so graceful. I need to make build some stairs right there. I know, but I just haven't done it yet. Another project, another day. Yep. All right. Air compressor. Air compressor. I'm going to go ahead and put this in the valve down here, add some air, and hopefully it's going to start coming out of the all the faucets. So it should blow out all the water that's left in the lines. Cool. All right, here we go. Move that guy out of the way. Notice, look, it's nice and dry down here. There we go. Put more air in it. That was disgusting. What did you say? It's like diarrhea. Oh, disgusting. Yeah. It was really super disgusting brown. So it came out of all the faucets? Yep, all, all of them. Air came out of all of them? Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. So what I'd like you to do is flush the toilet again and make sure that the tank's not full. Wow. That's nasty. Don't look in there. Oh, we need to unhook these guys. The washer. Yep. I oh, see hey. what, oh wow. What's going on? Or something let loose. Something that'll fit under here. Can you grab something please? Like a shallow bowl? Yeah, bowl maybe, or cup. This work? Yeah. Huh, it's done. <laughs> oh, <well>. That's funny. <laughs> Alright, step one's done. The supply lines are empty. And now we get to do step two. Tuck, so you thirsty. Earlier this morning, we had a moose in the garden eating our apple trees. He was eating that little apple tree right over there. And then he came through right here and just busted right through the fence. I mean, like, look, here's the fence wiring. These are all the moose tracks right here. So we might come back to having no fruit trees. I don't know, we gotta go though. Time is of the essence. And he got in there, putting those back up is not going to stop him. So we shall see when we get back. I'll give you guys an update. All right, step number two. Put an antifreeze in all of the traps. How much you put in? I'm gonna put in precisely 
that much. <laughs> nice. Yes. What about this side? It has only one trap. Yeah, feel but it. it's gonna be only one trap. It feels neglected. Okay. <laughs> there we go. Thanks. I feel better now. We need another um, jug of this stuff. I bought four. All right. Where are they? In the back of Maxine. No reservations, got this chance, might as well take it, oh, let's go, anywhere, no destination, this whole world, us for the taking, brand new life, out there just waiting, oh, let's go, don't need a rain. Well up. <laughs> Ciao, Ben. Now we just have the washing machine. You and Seth want to do that and I will wipe this mess up? Sure. You just pour it right in there. A couple cups. Yep. Good. It's good. Just getting a fire ready so that when we come back, all we got to do is light it and start heating up the house. Because who knows what time we're going to return. It could be in the middle of the night. Yeah, and it's going to be so cold in yeah, here. Yeah, like the whole house is going to be ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> Last thing to do before we leave is to make sure that all of the security cameras around the homestead are working, like this one right here. Hey, that's me. There's one there. <laughs> it's cool because they just automatically upload to the cloud. So even if somebody came in and like stole the security cameras, all of the footage is already up in the cloud. So as you somebody grabbed the camera, oh, there's your face right there. It's beautiful. <laughs> Caught on camera. You kind of look mm -hmm. like a bandit. Yeah. Money. <laughs> Here you go. Ready. Right. Car's warming up. Cool. Let's blow this popsicle. Sometimes you're inside out. Twist, turn it upside down. You're the place where I call home. Some things we're never gonna learn. Like which way the world's gonna turn. So how did you guys like that thumbnail? <laughs> you might be thinking clickbait, but really, you know, there was this really cool road on the way and it was windy. And I thought, man, that just looks like an awesome place to get a picture of Jules hitchhiking. <laughs> you never thought that would happen. So that's why it's titled, you never thought that would happen or something like that. But we've been in Tennessee for about a week now, visiting with Sarah at the Frida Hardeman Bible Lectureship. And so we've had a lot of fun there, a lot of good Bible classes, and getting to see a bunch of old friends as well. But right now we're actually on our way back home. We want to answer a bunch of your questions. Jules has got them all spooled up here on her phone. And so, Jules, what kind of questions are we going to answer today? This question is from Misty, and she has read mixed reviews on the oven that we actually use at home. And so she'd like our opinion on it. That's whether fair. or not we like it, or things that we like about it, and things we don't like about it. Okay. How do you like it? <laughs> I think it's a great oven. It definitely does its job. I do, I mean, we haven't had any problems with it. The only, my only complaint really is that it is, the range itself gets dirty really easily. Like and, the top of the stove part. Yeah, the top uh -huh. of the stove. It gets dirty and it's hard to clean it, like to clean it well. Yeah. Um, also there's like behind the knobs, it gets really uh, grimy. And so it's hard to get behind the knobs to actually clean it super, right. super well. And we haven't been able to find like, you know, like on those the electric ovens, how they have that, they have like that silver kind of tray thing that goes yeah. underneath the burner. Well, we haven't been able to find ones that kind of go under these burners that you yeah. can just take out and wash. Yeah, that so, would be convenient. Right. 
So, but maybe you could find those, and then if you did, then it'd be a lot easier to. Yeah, I guess you could make some with like aluminum foil or something. Yeah, maybe. Maybe if we get another one, I'll start with those. Right. <laughs> but I think one of the reasons we chose that stove was because it was so much less expensive than like the unique brands yeah. or the yeah. premier brand um, off grid stoves. You know, it uses a battery for the igniter, you don't actually yeah. have to plug it in. We've never, and so far, we haven't had to change that battery. That's true. Like, yeah, it's been what? Three. Almost. Well, it's been three. More, this is our third winter. Third winter, winter. yeah. So, so that's pretty good. Yeah. We use it quite a bit. One little 9 volt yeah. battery. I haven't actually tried to clean the oven so ever. So I don't know if that cleans well or not. Right. But as far as its efficiency and like. Cook it on. It's great. It yeah. cooks food and everything. Yeah, boils water. <laughs> yeah, works great. <laughs> Our next question is about what we did before we moved off grid. Um, so this person mentions that you have talked about working in refrigeration, HVAC, stuff like right. that before. Um, and so people are a little bit interested in our past. All right. And so there was kind of several questions along yeah. that line, right? Yeah. So we'll like kind of throw them up on the screen, but we'll try to answer all of those. Like one answer. And like one answer. All right. So yes, I did do uh, industrial refrigeration work, uh, mostly in the Los Angeles area. I went to refrigeration school in uh, Phoenix, Arizona, but that was over 20 years ago, right? Long time ago. And so uh, we did industrial refrigeration. So like meat packing plants, uh, ice cream factories, bottling plants, things like that big scale, you know, like giant warehouse size freezers, forklifts drive around in there, like people work inside of a giant freezer like it's a regular warehouse. You should tell them the um, story about the onions. Oh yeah, okay, so, oh, that was really yeah, cool. so this one place that we went to, they did like diced onions for Taco Bell and places like that that use diced onions. So anyway, they take these onions and they, they be in these giant boxes, like a uh, size of a pallet, like four feet tall load them up with a forklift and then dump them into this water bath where they get cleaned off. And then they had all these ladies that were working like on this assembly line. And um, they were just working in there, you know, they had like the head thing and the um, glasses, you know, and stuff, but but they didn't have like a, a mask on. And uh, so anyway, I would have, when I went into there to like actually go in and, and check the equipment, I would have to put my gas mask on. Like we had gas masks for working with ammonia because we did ammonia refrigeration. And so I would have to put my gas mask on because the onions in that little factory were so strong and burned my eyes so bad. But those ladies just worked in there all day just with safety glasses on, so you know? Crazy. Yeah, cleaning and dicing all those onions up. It was pretty amazing. I wonder if they just built up like the tolerance. Yeah, they must have. It. Crazy. You know, but anyway, there were some tough ladies working in there. <laughs> so I did industrial refrigeration for a while. I did some also residential and commercial heating and air. But like I said, that was 20 years ago. Jules and I got married, and then um, we've been in full time ministry for like 19 years or so 18, 19 years full time ministry. Uh, about 10 years of that, we were working in Indonesia. Part of that time was on the island of New Guinea and part of it was on the island of Java. And then we came back home because our work there was finished. And so we're now we're in Idaho yeah. and we're there. We help with the church in Idaho, the Sandpoint Church of Christ. And if you're ever in the area, you're always welcome to come by. On Sunday or Wednesday, there's a link down in the description below where you can like find out times and directions and all that kind of stuff to the building if you're in the Sandpoint area. But, um, we do that, and then we work with we work at our homestead, yeah. building our place. And we so, kind of jumped the gun. <laughs> well, well, we'll get to that. We'll get we'll get to that a little bit. But no, you kind of jumped the gun on um, other questions people asked. Like they, so people have talked about, um, or some some of the common people have said have to do with mission work. Oh yeah. And they noticed that some of our videos we've been in Indonesia, and and so that was like another question. We were Get to, oh, but sorry. we might as well continue on with it now. All right. Um, talking about mission work. Did we do mission work? Um, where and 
also like, are we ever going to go do that again? If you look back at our old videos, if you like go to videos and then you can sort by oldest to newest. Anyway, you can go back and look at all of our really old videos where we're in Indonesia and you can kind of see all that. And the, kids are, so, the kids are so cute. Seth has this little tiny voice. <laughs> yeah, they were way younger. But um, so we did that. And will we ever go back? We hope to go back. We want to visit. Um, yeah. Sarah would like to move back there sometime. To Indonesia. Yeah, to yeah. Indonesia. It's but, difficult yeah. right now yeah. because we had already planned to return for a visit like two years ago. But then with COVID, things are making travel, overseas travel, quite yeah. a bit harder. And Indonesia is really strict. Yeah. You know, like last summer we went to Tanzania, but that was like super easy. Just a couple COVID tests and that's it. But Indonesia is way stricter. Yeah. So we we'll have to wait. Quarantine times and stuff yeah. like that makes it um, less feasible to be able to do that right now. Definitely what we want to. <laughs> so Marty and I just celebrated our 21st wedding anniversary right. on this trip. Yep. These, these are the flowers that he got me. They're kind of wilted now. <laughs> they froze in the car last Whoa. night, I think. They still smell really good. Right now it's two degrees Fahrenheit, and we are in um, we in South Dakota. Um, yeah, we just went to South Dakota. Yeah, so we're in South Dakota, heading. West yeah. on I-90. What was it that the guy at the hotel said when, we, when you checked us in last night? It was yeah, funny. He said that there's like a freeze warning or something, and if you're outside for like nine minutes, your blood and heart will freeze. Yikes. So, I don't know about that, but it is pretty cold. And it was windy, too. Yeah. So, like, the wind makes it feel super icy. And okay. it's cool. Oh, and the speed limit here is 80 miles an hour. Yeah. So, that's cool. That is cool. Okay, on to a very serious question, Marty. All right. Do you like your bacon thick or thin? Crispy or what does it say? Limp. Uh, all right. Super serious question. You want me to answer the first or you yeah, want to answer? Okay. All right. So I say I say not crispy. <laughs> well, let's go to the thick or thin. Thick, thick or thin. For sure, thick. Thick. And not crispy like when you bite it, it, it snaps, but not... Um, not also limp, like where the white part is still kind of like, Gross. like chewy or slimy, and so kind of like leather, like a really firm leather, but not quite crispy. Yeah, it doesn't like snap when you. Right, like you can bend it still. Yeah, that's the same with me. I think we like our bacon the same. This question comes from Russia. Why don't you wear a hat when you're cold? Ah, okay. <laughs> I normally wear a hat. Like almost all the time. Like a baseball hat. Yeah, this hat right here. Yeah. I know, like people recognize me in public because of the hat. That's true. And yeah. so whether it's hot or cold, I typically wear this hat. But if it's really cold, I'll wear my beanie. So I don't know. I guess there's some times when it's cold I don't wear a hat, but normally I do. Yeah. And when you're cold, you typically wear your beanie. I typically wear a beanie um, when I'm cold, except when I don't want a hat here. <laughs> yes. So like if I know I'm going somewhere later in the day, say we're going to Bible class, and I'm not going to be showering again, and I'm going to be taking my beanie off, then I most likely won't wear a beanie that day, just so that my hair doesn't end up all flat. Um, I don't know. But the struggles of being a girl. struggles, yeah. Because <laughs> you can't okay. do anything about it. Once you get hat hair, you got hat hair right. the rest of the day. <laughs> Although I was, we were watching the video, you know, from what we recorded when we were at home getting ready to go to Tennessee, and I had some serious hot hair. And That's because you that were wearing a beanie. I know, man. Yeah. That was like crazy. It's like, whoa. This question is definitely directed to you. Okay. And it's why do you keep saying morning? Good I've morning. Heard, I've heard you say morning, so I know you know the the word. Is saying it incorrectly an American thing? <laughs> okay, so go ahead, come on over there, person. Um, I think I say good morning, M O R N G I N. Good morning. Morning. Why? I don't know why. <laughs> I never knew I said it differently than anybody else. So I didn't even I didn't know that until you guys started pointing it out in the videos. <laughs> I don't know why. It's just a Marty thing. This question is about sawmills and why we don't own our own sawmill. 
why don't we go on our own sawmill? Yeah. Um, well, I guess it's because of a couple reasons. One, when we started building, we didn't really have the money to purchase a sawmill. Um, and the amount of time that it would have taken to saw our own lumber, to dry build it. our house yeah. and dry it, to build our house, we didn't have time for that. We got to our property at the end of May and we needed to have a place to live before winter. And so we needed things to happen really quickly and purchasing a sawmill, sawing all the lumber and trying to build a house all at the same time would have been very impractical for us. Yeah. Plus, we don't have a lot of large trees. No, yeah, our trees on our property are pretty small. And we didn't the majority, have- majority. Yeah, yeah, we didn't have the equipment to move the trees. If we had us, so we would have had to buy a tractor as well to move the trees. And we just didn't have that money when and we now started. we actually know several of our friends who own their own sawmill. Yeah. And have offered, like, if we want anything milled, like, we can go do it on their property. So, the necessity isn't there right now for us yeah. to do that. Yeah. Although it's really cool. Like, you can see some of the stuff that people produce, and it is really, really oh, awesome. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Really cool. Next question has to do with our freeze-dried food. I know the shelf life is 25 years, but does the nutrition deteriorate with age? It's not supposed to. It's not supposed to. Right? Yeah. It's not supposed to really deteriorate. It's supposed to stay good for the whole 25 years and be, you know, just as nutritious as it was when they put it in the can. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't have any personal experience with eating, you know, 25 year old freeze dried Thrive Life food. Right. <laughs> so I can't, like, Say from personal experience, but might have to ask us in twenty four years. <laughs> but it's it's supposed to retain its value, right? So. And they're actually they're having a really big, oh, yeah. a really big sale. Like right now, what was it? The fourteenth through yeah. the sixteenth or something. The fourteenth through the sixteenth. Yeah, through the fourteenth through the sixteenth of February. If you order, they're having a big sale. Um, they're having they're giving ten percent off retail price for one-time orders and 25% off retail price for delivery orders. Yeah, that, on, that's a pretty big discount. Yeah, that's big. And that's on like some of the favorites, the six favorite customer favorite foods. So. so what I'll do for you guys is put a link down in the description of this video where you can check out that sale. But also, if you're on a TV, then I will put um, this little guy right here, this QR code, all you have to do is open up the camera app on your phone and point it at your TV, yeah. and then you can follow the link and, and check it out there on your phone. All right? Yeah. So, That'd be cool. But you need to know the coupon code. Oh, yeah. <laughs> coupon code's important. So when you go to check out, you have a coupon code, and the coupon code is LOVE, L-O-V-E. Right. Not so, sponsored video, by no, the way. No, it's not sponsored. It's just offered to everybody, but it's a great deal. 25% off retail price. Right. That's huge. So... Yeah, I can check that out. They're not paying us to say that. No. <laughs> no, I just think it's a good deal. Yeah. <laughs> this question is a really good question. It has some different parts, but basically it's about Idaho and like why we chose Idaho. Why would we choose to live in the woods and on the suburbs? And what kind of outdoor activities can people expect to find like if they come up this way? Uh, why Idaho? There's a lot of different reasons why we chose <laughs> Idaho. I mean, like, yeah. we wrote a whole blog article of, like, all of the different reasons why we chose Idaho. And uh, one is because of the congregation that's here. They asked us to come up and help work with them. So yeah. that's one reason. But besides that, um, Idaho's a great state. You know, it's a conservative state. Uh, their building codes in our county are really relaxed. Uh, homeschool home laws are really we're, good. Yeah, we're a homeschool family, and homeschool laws are really relaxed here. Right. Just like the building codes. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's beautiful. You get all four seasons. You get a lot of snow in the winter. Um, I don't know what kind of outdoor activities. Hunting, hiking, fishing, hiking. Boating. Boating, snowmobiling, yeah. skiing. Snowshoeing. Uh, what we miss? I don't know what else we missed. All kinds of stuff. Whatever you can do outdoors, you can do here. Yeah. Except for surfing, I guess. Yeah. No surfing. No surfing. This is a fun question from Russell. Will you ever run out of sheetrock? Oh, man. 
Well, I don't know. It's just, it just seems to go on and on and on. Yes. A lot of you guys probably hope we run out of sheetrock really <laughs> soon. I hope so too. So, hope we finish our sheetrock soon, but I mean, it's going to be a while. We got to we finish up the apartment, move into there, and then we've still got to finish the whole rest of the house. But that'll come later, yeah. next year maybe, when we start sheetrocking the, the house. Anna is wondering if the apartment above the garage will be an Airbnb type thing. She says, what's better than debt-free off-grid homestead? Debt-free off-grid income property. Uh -huh. <laughs> and of course, our family would love to visit. <laughs> um, hopefully, it will not be an Airbnb. But if it needs to be, then it could be. But you're right. That is That was one of the reasons why we actually put a kitchen in there. Right. Because... Um, it has the potential to, or the opportunity, if we need it in the future, to be something that we rent out. Right. Um, that way it is totally, you know, shut the door, lock the door, and it's its own place, its own living quarters. Um, but, like Marty said, it's not what we would like to see happen. Right. Um, but if we need it, then it's a possibility. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Hopefully it can be just used for guests yeah. or... You know, maybe if Sarah or Seth want to rent it later, they can rent it. Yeah. But otherwise, in the future, yeah, we want it to be for guests to yeah. come and stay out for free. Yeah. Rather than and family and yeah, friends. Yeah. Having yeah. having people you know rent Live it. there. Yeah. We've received several questions about our income and what we do for a living, like how we make our money. Uh, yes, we actually we did a whole video oh, about yeah. how we make our income. Yeah. It's actually the video that is right here. So go ahead, check out that video. And in the meantime, guys, we hope you have a really great day. Keep, Keep smiling. smiling.